Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and yesterday was one of the biggest cancellations of all time. Twitter Special Forces ran out because, well, 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 would you believe it or not, there was another session of a YouTuber doing something very shady. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on this channel, I just want to reiterate for the fact, I've covered real menaces to society. Before we continue, I made a video about Club Penguin, and there used to be this private server where uh, children would sign on to the server, alright, they would, they would give personal information away they would actually end up being blackmailed by legitimate terrors to society now when i cover stuff like this all right i really know i think i have somewhat of an idea about a genuine bad person right and i understand how bad things can get that's why on this channel when things like grooming and, and like pedophilia get mentioned we don't take it lightly okay i don't take it lightly too all right, I, I go hard on those videos. I, I go to the YouTube self demonetizer and I tell that I tell that shit slap me up, baby. Okay, because because we're going in pretty rough. Now let's get started with all of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, Game Grumps is a channel that I think I'm very familiar with, and a lot of you are incredibly familiar with too. I pretty much started my career watching these Game Grump guys. I have made lifelong friends through the Game Grump. So this kind of a cancellation, if it was if it was really as heavy as, as it was supposed to be, would have hit me really hard on an emotional level. Now, Dan Avedon is one of the hosts, co-hosts of the Game Grumps alongside Aaron. And he's been accused of some pretty, pretty wild stuff. Now, as we go into this, I want to really look into the context and all this situation. Now, this is the Rant Grumps subreddit. Okay, if you don't know what the Rant Grumps is, they're people who rant and vent about the Game Grumps. For full context, the Game Grumps go through some sort of a uh, a cancel solstice, if you will. Now, one of the threats came out. For over a year now, there have been accusations about Dan Avedon sexting, sleeping, and ghosting younger fans. That line right there is enough to pique anyone's interest and freak people out. Among other things, several girls have come forward publicly, while others have contacted me or others privately. A few days ago, another girl who wishes to remain anonymous for obvious reasons contacted me saying she wanted to come forward sharing both her story and some physical evidence. Now, before we continue into this situation, I'm one of those firm people where I believe every story, okay? Uh, let me just run something by you. When people create accusations like this, when people come forward with a story, everyone should take that seriously. There has never been a career made from these kind of stories. It's always a net loss for everyone that gets involved in, because very rarely does true justice ever really get enacted. So for people to have the balls to come forward with a story, it's a pretty big deal. Now, for me over here, okay, I'm going to look at this as objective as I can. I'm going to look at every bit of factoid. Now, the first thing that gets mentioned here is to prove the story is through true and this is indeed dan she's given permission to show a video from dan now this video in question is dan hotub all right so dan basically was at a hotel in new mexico showing some showing some hot tub action going on and to paraphrase the fuck out of this video he's like look at this hot tub look at this jacuzzi it's got two seats and jets in the back might be fun to fuck all right, so there, there you've got some real cringe magic to work with. Uh, this video is really cringy. If you watch it, it, it just it literally sounds like a fucking underdeveloped like 15 year old talking to somebody about sex. I'm gonna be fucking 100% real. It's really that bad. Before we look into this, I'm gonna go through a timeline of sorts with you, okay? Now, this is the first message received to this girl. Now, at the time, this girl is 17. All right, uh, 17 and 11 months, okay? So basically just turning 18. This is the first message that people had to work with regarding these allegations. Thanks, blank, you rock. And so does blank. That's where blank, okay? Now, to this, that's Dan's messaging, right? This is this is the uh, this is the girl in question. Oh my goodness! I'll hide my loved ones. You should be in blank. We could be best friends, Dan. Emoji sad. I'm actually hoping to visit there and do some shows in early 2014. I'll keep you posted. Woo! If, if I ever, ever type woo in a text box to you or anybody, fucking end me. That shit is cringe. Ah, I'm so excited now. Yay! Happy's emoji. Love you, man. Now, to be fair with you over here, I know some people are going to look at this and say, wow, this is it? Listen, I actually kind of I actually kind of understand where this girl is going to be coming from, but we'll get to all of that in a little bit. Just give me a second, baby. We're going to work with what we have. Now then, you get the message a month later. Happy 18th birthday, blank. Have a lovely day. Lots of love to you. And here you got like a fucking Twitter barrage of tone indicators. X... 
X, 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 meaning there's some happiness going around over here. Now, this is something that I come across a lot. When I look at these two messages, uh, if we're going to look for evidence of grooming or any form of pedophilia involving this, quite honestly, the first message that we saw was a pretty generic stock response that one would give to any real, like, fan out there. And by stock response, I mean, like, listen, I keep my DMs open, and I try to respond as much as I can, so I'm speaking from personal experience. There are fans that love to communicate with their creators, and I think in this market on the internet, it's just gotten so much more easier to do it, especially with people who are YouTubers or streamers. And it's actually, you know, a really humbling and cool thing to interact with fans that way. Uh, I've had things where fans have said, listen, Muda, if you're down in San Diego, you know, I would love to get a beer or something. And I'm never going to deny a beer. Like, if you want to get a beer with me, I'm always down to do it no matter what. But usually I look at that message in the same vein, right? They were like, hey, you know, if you're down here, let me know about the concerts and you know, Dan was like, sure, I'll let you know, cool, yay, and that was pretty much what it was, I mean, it was just, a, it, to be honest, I couldn't see any element of grooming or anything of the sort, and a month later, you get a happy birthday message, which seems like a, you know, normal happy birthday, we all wish happy birthday to one another, I've wished happy birthday to fans, I think most creators wish happy birthdays whenever they get told of it, I think it's just a normal human thing to do. When I look at these two messages, even though this was messaged around the age of, like, 17 and 11 months to 18, I I don't see any elements of anything sort of sexual or predatory in this in in this instance. Now, of course, four years time skipping had happened. Okay, a little Metal Gear Solid 2 action, and it seems as though these people, Danny, and uh, and, and 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 our and our person over here, our Jane Doe, have actually continued talking. Now, the talking because they were because because she was over 18 because she was at this point 22 ish this is four years later uh had become a little more sexual okay and i consider this all to be completely unprofessional so let's read the bit of the sexting message now this is after the this is the bathtub video that we just watched a little bit ago and here you can see ha thank you oh i enjoyed this though but that's fine sleep well handsome night night heart emoji to which Dan sends that cringe to your fucking uh, bathtub video. Uh, my God, I have never seen something so beautiful and fancy. I really wish I was there too. Shit emoji. If you feel comfortable with the idea, you should send me a little video saying that you'd like to fuck. Ah, oh, fuck me in that tub. Ooh. That would do things for me, ha ha. This is literally all that we were given to work with in the entire thread that basically sparked the largest Twitter cancellation uh, ever. I mean, the second largest, the first one being good old David Dobrik. I mean, that dude lost a billion dollars if we're going to be speculating, which is an insane story. But looking at it, this entire thing, when I go on Twitter and I see grooming and all this kind of pedo allegation stuff, it fucking burns me because this isn't it. You know what this is? It's completely fucking unprofessional behavior. And you want to know how unprofessional it is? If you go all the way back, all right, it literally has started 11 months ago. There has been complete accusation posts regarding uh, a, an individual known as Caddy Schwartz, the XPA and X close friend, who have basically, there have been multiple women that have come forward and said that all Dan does is come out, allegedly, start a conversation, have sex for a weekend, and then completely ghost you afterwards. Now, for all the Twitter cancel operators out there, I'm literally going to read elements of this thread for you because I know that some people fail reading comprehension, so I'm going to state this right now. Dan's alleged approach throughout all of these encounters has been reported consistently by the women who've told their stories. He'd approach women, cultivate a relationship with them, and make it seem as if he wanted to date them or have a serious relationship with them, arrange to meet them for a weekend, then after the first encounter for a single weekend, would ditch further contact with them. Okay? That is not obviously illegal, and your sense of morality may vary. It absolutely does. Even if you go down four par like two paragraphs, it literally says no, he's not a pedophile or a rapist or none of the accusations have named him as such. Now, to be honest with you, none of this is grooming or pedophilia, but you know what it is, all right? Because a lot of people on the internet and especially Twitter like to fucking conflate legality and morality. You wanna know what the fuck this is? It's really, really unprofessional and unrespectable behavior. I have no respect for Dan, okay? If Dan is going out there, having sex with women for one night stands and then immediately ghosting them afterwards. You know what that is? That's just what an asshole comes down to. Dan is not a groomer or a pedo or anything, okay? Dan is not what Twitter likes to conflate. Because here's the thing. When you brand somebody on the internet like that, their entire life gets fucked up. Being an asshole 
is far better than being in the grooming category, okay? Being an asshole is a million light years better than being the absolute scum of the fucking earth. People like people people on Twitter, people on all this cancel culture fucking bandwagons, these these hate these hate wagons if you will, immediately like to bring these entire things up like, "Hey, this person's a groomer." Because they hear the words 18 and any form of involvement and they're like, "Fuck it. We're at this point where we're calling a man who is in his 30s having sex with somebody who is in their tw like 20 like 22, 23 at the time. Again, I want to remind you, that is a consenting adult. Nothing that I read in these messages was something out of any individual that was having any sort of duress or whatever, right? Like, at the end of the day, these are two consenting adults who had sex. And, of course, the girl in the situation got fucking ghosted. And I completely understand the anger and the frustration over there. That shit sucks. But you know what? That just means the other person is a complete fucking asshole. And if you have an entire history now that apparently is... People are coming out of, like, 10, 11 stories of this guy ghosting them after having sex, there's probably a very good chance that Dan is not somebody that you can rely on. And Dan kind of comes across in fact, is a complete dick about this entire situation. That doesn't mean that Dan is committing scum of the earth illegal activities. For people to em this is the problem when you water down shit like grooming and pedophilia. It makes the actual fucked up allegations and the actual people committing these serious crimes, it just waters down the entire sh situation. And it actually helps these people get away because in society, when you have something so watered down, it starts to impact you less. These kind of allegations shouldn't impact anybody less. And obviously because of this cancellation, it really doesn't because people do care about this. People do look at the situation. People do know that this is fucked up. I look at this entire situation and I see one thing and one thing clearly. Based on everything that we've seen so far, this is... I would say ethically unprofessional and just wrong. I'm not going to say that it's even close to illegal because it's just not. Now, that's really what I think about the situation. Of course, this had to happen on the same day that trends like life without men would be. You don't know what that is? OnlyFans would fail. OnlyFans goes bankrupt if that if if that if that came into fucking reality. The other bullshit that I'm seeing over here are people who are comparing this to other creators. Now, I'm going to explain something real quick, okay? When you look at when you look at tweets like this, time is nothing but a flat circle. Once YouTubers get famous enough, they begin to seek out people younger than them. Too young, actually, thus having their career being thrown out the window as they attempt to have a relationship with teenagers or children. You know, I, I'm going to be real with you. This entire situation, the, the biggest reason that I want to talk about it is it makes every fucking one of us look just terrible because because of this shit like youtuber starts trending okay like i'm not even kidding with you you go to the biggest trends youtubers is right there and what's it all about it's about this whole situation it's about youtubers who are allegedly grooming and being pedophiles there are actually youtubers like that out there i said in the beginning of this video that we had the cancel culture bandwagon and we had this whole like club penguin ordeal that i looked at it, where's the cancel culture energy when it comes to shit like that it almost feels like it's so misappropriately applied and it feels like everyone just waters down these incredibly serious allegations and crimes uh, over over the slightest thing if anybody looked at all of what we just saw right now i don't think 99 i think 99 percent of people would look at this as a situation of one guy being an asshole which again may i remind you isn't okay and people compare this to rock stars of the 80s and 90s guys it wasn't even okay then all right if you're gonna be an asshole like this and ghost people after sex it makes you in my opinion just ethically degenerate. It doesn't make you somebody that's doing anything illegal, however. And I'm glad that I mentioned the whole rock star thing. Like, if you look at the music industry, this kind of stuff happens all the time. And for some reason, you know, the YouTuber market, which is, I guess, that influencer side is sort of treated separately than the general, like, pool of high profile public figures that are out there, which I guess it really shouldn't be. And I'll get to that in just one second. This happens a lot in, in, in celebrity culture and things like that. And it shouldn't, you know, in my opinion, it's very, it's, it's very unprofessional and you just shouldn't, you know, do this. Like the whole groupie culture to me was always kind of weird. Even when I looked at it back in the nineties, throughout the two thousands and even nowadays, but I guess this takes me on to another point too. And that's with the idolization of YouTubers. Uh, you should never idolize a YouTuber. I think if you're a younger person, I th I know what it must feel like to get in 
touch with the creator of your choice, somebody who you look up to. And I guess the best message that I can pass along is you really have to learn to be careful, okay? You have no idea what somebody is like behind the camera. And sometimes the nicest people can come across behind the scenes as some of the most weird, predatory, maybe sexualized individuals. I guess when you get that personal and and the lines start to blur, if you're a person that's younger, if you're somebody that, you know, if you feel like you're on that other end of the power dynamic, as people like to call it, uh, you should, I, I guess the best advice to offer is to just uh, tread carefully and understand that you need to separate yourself. If you feel that somebody is coming on to you and somebody may be using you at all for maybe some sort of sexual purpose or even anything, if, if somebody feels like they're using you for anything and you look up to them, you have to learn to separate. You have to contact the immediate people around you, your family, your friends, close people. You have to make sure that they're able to pull you out or at least they're able to properly assist you. And you have to be open to that. I know it's hard to, to really go through with that, especially when you're in the moment, but I think that's sort of the best advice, okay? There's going to be a lot of people in life in general that will try to use you, and I guess as you grow up, uh, you just have to learn to separate, and you have to learn to really trust the people that are immediately directly around you that may be able to assist you. And again, if you're also like a creator that messages their fans, and in some inkling you realize, okay, this might be progressing into sexual territory, or I'm going there, there's no one, no one can say that there can't be relationships on the internet that form. It happens if it's appropriately done. You will find the one fan here and there that is level-headed, they're not starstruck, and you might be able to strike a good genuine relationship before things escalate into physical relationships and whatnot. But if you come across a fan that's obviously starstruck, that obviously will lay down on train tracks in front of you, you have to really learn to separate yourself, and you really have to stay away from it, because there are some serious mistakes that can be made, and if somebody turns out to be underage, that is completely on the adult, 100%. Regardless of any situation, adults need to be super careful. That's just how things go, especially when you look at the last six to 12 months of YouTube. And there's been week after week after week of some new creator coming out with some fucking weird allegation or something that can get them seriously canceled. You just have it's a, it's a fucked up world. And I think both sides need to really assess this. But genuinely, I go with the victims in this situation because for people to come out with these stories takes a lot of fucking courage and balls in this situation when I object objectively from a lawyer type perspective look at all of what i've seen all i witness is somebody that's ethically just an asshole but nobody that has done anything illegal so yeah i may not like dan's procedure regarding how he interacts with his fans but he's certainly no pedo groomer and i wish people would stop watering that shit down anyways that being said this is me mudahar and i'm out